so many parts of the economy, women have made great progress. They've made great progress in business and law and medicine, in biology and chemistry. Yet in engineering and in computing, we see much less progress. Computing and engineering are the professions that have the lowest percentage of women at this point. Uh, women are only 12% of the engineering workforce and 26% of the computing workforce. There are really two fields where we have to understand why have these fields not changed when so many have? The number one thing holding women back, I would say, would be stereotypes. There's very clear uh, evidence that most of us hold gender biases. We evaluate men and women differently. And in fields like engineering and computing that are typically male fields, um, we tend to judge men to be more competent. A study done by Ernesto Rubin, who's a business professor at Columbia, and his colleagues, that showed that 30% of the time, higher performing women were not chosen um, for a, a task that's a mathematical task. This was a study that simulated a hiring situation. The people acting as employers in this scenario, they chose the higher performing candidate a certain percent of the time, I think it was around 70% of the time, but then they chose the lower performing man nearly almost all the other time, about 30% of the time they chose the lower performing man over the higher performing woman. What this suggests is that employers are, they, they do frequently choose the best person for the job, but 30% of the time they're choosing a lower performing man over a higher performing woman. So that's surprising to me. That was surprising to see that, the, that bias can be that significant. We looked at two different resumes, John and Jennifer, and these resumes were sent for a lab position to a variety of science, technology, engineering, and math faculty. And what came back was both male and female faculty were more likely to choose the male applicant, and they were more likely to give a higher salary to the male applicant. These recent studies on gender bias suggest that, or they prove basically that bias um, gender bias affects hiring decisions. It comes into play in terms of hiring, promotion, um, in terms of our I know, internalized ideas of what we can do. And then it's just every day, right? Every day you're going to work and you're, it's just a little bit harder. You're running into people who, who just, through no real fault of their own, they're just, they just don't think women are as good at this. And it's, I mean, it's true for women and men. It's not, uh, it's not like a, it's only men who feel this way towards women. Many of the problems that we're facing in the world are going to require the skills of engineers and computer scientists. And solving these problems is going to require everybody to participate. It's, it, we can't really afford to leave out half of the population. Employers should worry about diversity because with more diverse teams, you're going to have more innovation. You're going to have greater productivity and creativity. There's evidence that more that diverse teams come up with more creative um, solutions, better solutions, more representative of the population. Early voice recognition systems, for example, were um, were calibrated in such a way that they actually didn't recognize women's voices. So that's one example of where having more women at the table, at the design table, might have made a difference. Um, another example has to do with airbags in cars. Um, initially, they were designed to uh, the average man's build and resulting in um, avoidable um, injuries and even deaths uh, among women and, and children. So these are it's another example of um, something that could have been avoided were, you know, different experiences is brought to the table. Uh, it's not that it's always easy to work in diverse teams, but the end products tend to be better. When we have a full um, workforce for employers to choose from, so when women are included in that workforce, we have the diversity that we know is associated with creativity and productivity. So it's really a win-win. There's an interesting study by Nadia Fuad and Ramala Singh at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. They surveyed engineers, women engineers, who um, either were still working in the field or who had left the field, and tried to get a sense of why did these women leave the field. And so what they found was that these women were very similar, the women who had stayed and the women who had left. They were just as confident of their engineering abilities, just as interested in the work. But the women who had left engineering were in environments that were less 
supportive. And, and by supportive, I mean they had fewer opportunities for advancement, um, less clear paths for advancement, fewer training and development opportunities where they could develop their skills. In some cases, they also experienced uncivil work environments. Um, so among the women who, who were less satisfied with their jobs, their engineering jobs, those women were um, in, in environments where they observed uncivil behaviors more often than women who said that they were satisfied with their jobs. And so that's, that's something that is useful for employers to know. Um, that, that just kind of these, the things that they already probably know that they need to be doing, things that, that um, companies on the list of best places to work already are doing, that can help to retain women in engineering. So the Harvey Mudd examples is a good one of how some small changes and some big changes can make uh, a big difference in the number of students, and in fact double the number of students in the program. So looking at the computer science program, Harvey Mudd did three different things. They looked at their introductory course and they changed it. They looked for research opportunities for both male and female students right out of the gate, just in that first year and second year of, of college. And third, they sent their students to the Grace Hopper Celebration for Women in Computing. Put all these things together and you see the number of female students graduating in computer science at Harvey Mudd College is around 40% now. It's a useful model because it gets down to the brass tacks. What do we need to teach students to make them enjoy and think about enjoying this field? There are a number of things that we can do to increase the numbers of women in engineering and computing. A lot of the recommendations we make in the report are targeted towards employers because they, have, they play an important role um, in this effort. One thing is just to make a really welcoming environment for women. So, and that, that involves um, top management being clear about the fact that their, their goal is to have a workplace with more technical women. When the women workers learned that their companies had a gender diversity policy in their workplace, it meant a great deal to them, and they, um, those women tended to be more likely to be happier at their workplace. Another thing is to hold managers accountable for their decisions. We all use stereotypes and biases really to make quick decisions, and unless we have to back up our decisions, unless we have to defend them and explain why we made a certain decision, we're very likely to use stereotypes and biases to make our decisions. So um, having managers be accountable for their decisions can help. Another thing that companies can do to increase the percentage of women in engineering and computing is to emphasize the social relevance of the work that they're doing. Emphasizing the communal aspects of engineering and computing will likely help um, engineering and computing attract more men and more women because lots of people care about the social impact of their work. Women tend to care about it a little bit more. And so it's likely not only to increase the numbers of people overall coming into these fields, but to also close the gap between men and women's representation in these fields. Engineers and computer scientists actually make the things that we work with every day. And we see both of these fields as critical for the rest of the economy. And it is important that we see women having a say in these areas Women are still very much underrepresented in engineering and computing, but it doesn't have to be that way. There are steps that we can take to increase women's representation in these fields, and we'll all benefit from that. I think we can really make this difference. It's going to happen, it's already happening. It's just a question of sort of rolling up our sleeves and getting down to business.